Kuala Besut ni tepat comel Tepat di mana orang mari berhenti nak pergi pulau peti eh. Di mana orang kerja kelau berhenti nak pergi kelau Tepat Kuala Besut ni ada banyak cara tradisi, tradisi budaya Cara Kuala Besut di mana orang ramah mesra sangat-sangat Orang sini baik laku Tak kira bangsa, tak kira agama, tak kira kalah Uh, it's a carnival feeling. We have a lot of strangers. We have a lot of people. We have many people who want to say many things that have their own meaning and their own mind. But I would rather say the fishermen and the people here have already made up their mind way before the carnival time. But as usual, we are willing to listen. We listen, but whatever decision that is need to be made, that the day they want to vote, they have already decided. It's a much, I would say, a family and a clan decision. Because fishermen and folks here are very much organized family and organized clan. Because we have areas, we have fish. Uh, the head of the village is very important to us. And the head of community is very important to us. About 200 years ago, as far as I know from the folklore, uh, Kuala Besut River Mouth is an um, Aboriginal settlement. The leaders of the Aborigines is called Besut. And of course, Kuala is, is our river mouth. So by natural, this place is called Kuala Besut. It has been around for a long, long time. And uh, the nearby Pulau Perhentian served as a seafarer. Uh, from China, from India, as a stop point for water. Water is a very rare commodity in the sea. So Pulau Perhentian and Kuala Besut exist in tandem. Uh, that, that's what's up. And uh, Kuala Besut over the years has served as the biggest fishing port, fishing village in the whole of East Coast of uh, East Mal West Malaysia because it has a natural harbour a big river mouth and a good in, in, in a remote area where a good infrastructure where water and the shelter for fishermen are all easily available. Uh, Kuala Basut is a very uh, consists of 99% Muslim Malays which origins from various places but most of them origins towards the northern side of China, Yunnan, Thailand side rather unlike the other Malays of Malaysia uh, like Johor from Bugis and other places. The Chinese are also the earlier settlement which, which coexist. There are indications of Chinese seafarers. We have an old grave that is aged age about a few hundred years within this vicinity. Uh, there are proof that Kuala Basu served as a stop point a few hundred years ago already. The livelihood of the fishing here is very much depending on the nature. That means we live by the sea. Fish is our primary source of income. And uh, we are at the mercy of the weather. As you know, we are facing South China Sea, South China weather. And, uh, the months of October to January to us is a rough sea season. Small boat do not go to sea. Big boat rarely go to sea too because the weather is really unfriendly to us very, very much. There are many, many times where boats are capsized, fishermen are lost at sea and a loss of life. Musim tekuju tu memang dia tak nak tak nak pergi ke laut lah. Memang laut bergelora. Nak, nak keluar Kuala pun tak boleh. Kuala tu dia cetek. Tak? Dia orang tu memang duduk rumah aje lah. Harap ke tak dia, harap ke bantuan tu lah kalau kerajaan bagi. Kalau tidak, dia orang ni memang tak ada nak buat kerja lain tak ada. Asyik nak tunggu, tunggu musim tu balik lah baru boleh buat kerja pula. General income of a fisherman here earns about six to eight hundred ringgit a month. Uh, I would say a month is not a good indication because the good cash months are only six months a year. So if you would take a general rule, general per annum basis, 
they should be only earning about 500 ringgit a month. The government had been very helpful in such a way that they give to registered true blue fishermen a 1A son of 200 ringgit per month, which is very, very helpful to them. But I really hope the government do not have to give it in, in a one ex way where it is on a daily break basis, on a monthly basis, which does, it, after a long term, it becomes a, a spoiled kid situation. I would rather the government teach them how to fish rather than giving them the fish. You know what I mean. There are many methods to do it. This is something of contention, what I'm going to say, because a small little town of Kuala Besut, of population of a few thousand, we have so many government bodies from Jabatan Laut, Jabatan Perikana, Jabatan Taman Laut, Jabatan Alam Sekita, uh, Jabatan Perikanan, and this Jabatan reports to the various ministries. Imagine I am a fisherman, and usually fishermen don't go to school much. Good paying job is not available in this small town. So the fishermen are not the clever one. For the fishermen to own a, ship, a boat is a for very fortunate. But for a fisherman to be able to understand the laws and the, the regulation and whatnot, it's a complex thing to them. It would be better if the government, instead of having so many various departments and so many various departments that report to so many uh, ministries, it's good if they can come up with a friendly way of one-stop center where this department can nurture them, can educate them, can, uh, can train them and can teach them how to fish rather than giving them the fish. We have many laws of the sea, just like the laws of the land. We have laws that have been made and passed and enacted by Jabatan Laut that says that we cannot fish within the two nautical miles of the island to protect the corals, to protect the tourism industry. We have laws that say we cannot fish to a certain distance from the seashores. But look at the real facts. Why 2, why 5 and why 12 kilometers where the sea depth is more important? Science tells us very much that if the sunshine reaches the bottom of the ocean, there will be corals. Not the area and the length on the distance. That doesn't carry any meaning at all in science. So we hope the government can look into this in a more serious manner because I also read some reports like Coral K reports together with the United Nations reports that give this to the government that says very much that the fishermen of this vicinity have very little impact and are very, and are very helpful in the preservation of the corals. So, Please give us a better leeway that we are allowed to fish not by the distance but rather by the depth of the ocean where the sunshine cannot reach. It's just logical. This is something that is very, I would say, mischievous because we have enforcement agency that is enforcing this law because the law has been enacted. They are doing their job, where a fisherman do not know how to define all this area of what to catch, when to catch, and how to catch uh, on these areas. I would rather like to go to the real facts of life, where we would love to protect the turtles. We love, we are supposed to protect the oil installation facilities. We are supposed very, very much to protect the ecosystem of the marine park which we all love to protect. Harapan baru, harapan baru memang sentiasa ada lah untuk KJM. Maksudnya sentiasa tengok, kadang air rakyat ni KJM mesti kena tengok. Satu lagi bila KJM kata nak buat sesuatu dia mesti kena tunak. Jangan dia kata saja buat buat dok. 
rakyat bila dah dia dah, dah tak percaya dia tidak akan percaya dah marilah parti logo pun dia tidak akan percaya dah kalau kita janji kita nak buat kita tunai tak kiralah kerajaan mana pun dan bila dia berjanji nak buat dia kena tunai kalau dia tak tunai rakyat tak percaya dah dia 